Welcome or welcome back to Watch Advisor on YouTube. It's Alexander speaking and with me, Gregory Kisling, Head of Product Management of Omega. And we are in Milano, Mailand, um, Milan or Milan in French? Milan in French, absolutely, yes. <laughs> And the reason why we are um, coming from Milano, Milan, Milan in Deutsch, uh, is because we are going to present the latest edition of a Speedmaster called Chronoscope. Correct. And Greg, now you tell me, why are we in Milan today? Yeah, probably because this is definitely the, the country of the Speedmaster family. And uh, today we are releasing a totally new collection into the Speedmaster range um, with a new name, Chronoscope. Uh, maybe we can talk about it. Uh, with a new look, a new face, uh, especially with this uh, very nice dial, plenty of different scales, nothing to compare with uh, the standard iconic Moonwatch uh, face. A new caliber, uh, very interesting to mention that uh, the Speedmaster uh, will receive this new caliber, it's a hand winding caliber, and uh, also a new size, 43 millimeters, first time that we are introducing that size, which sits exactly between the 42 from the moon watch and the 44.25 uh, with the dark side of the moon. Don't forget to subscribe and to hit the bell to get our latest notifications. Yeah, Greg, let's dive into details. Yeah, we can maybe start with uh, the, the definition of chronoscope, why we decided to use chronoscope instead of chronograph for, for naming this new collection. The definition of uh, chronoscope is actually uh, an instrument which is able to define with accuracy uh, a duration of a phenomenon between two points or an event, such as uh, speed. Uh, we are talking about average speed, of course, uh, thanks to the tachymeter scale, such as a distance with a telemeter, uh, thanks to the speed of sound, and uh, then a frequency, uh, like a hard. Uh, so the chronoscope is actually uh, the correct definition, because if you take the word chronoscope, it's the blend of two traditional Greek expressions. You have chronos, which the meaning is time, and you have scope to observe. Mm -hmm. uh, chronograph, you have time and write. Yeah, you're writing so, time, and yeah, here you're observing time. Exactly, exactly. So it is interesting to mention that the first chronoscope invented by uh, Louis Brun, the, the founder of Omega, um, introduced the first chronoscope in 1885, uh, and uh, we have it here in my mm -hmm. hand. We have it, uh, and uh, you can see and you can read here at uh, 12 o'clock, it is written chronoscope mm -hmm. on the white enamel dial, uh, with two timers, 60-minute recorder, and 12-hour recorder. Mm -hmm. We do have the same in the new caliber. Mm -hmm. um, in 2007, uh, when we introduced uh, the first chronograph having the coaxial escapement into the devil line, we also decided to name that collection chronoscope instead of chronograph. Here at uh, mm -hmm. one o'clock you can read uh, chronoscope with mm -hmm. uh, this oversized uh, sub-dials mm -hmm. uh, sectorial uh, date. Clearly visible, yes. Same and here. In terms of design, uh, because we will talk uh, later on uh, about the, the, the dial, the busy dial. <laughs> in terms of design, we were also inspired by very nice uh, chronograph, chronoscope, dating from late 30s and uh, 40s, with only two counters, no date, so meaning plenty of space at 12 and 6 o'clock, uh, with different scales, such as the tachymeter, pulsometer, and telemeter scale. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, definitely uh, a tool uh, having all these scales. And uh, I think it's, um, it's a good idea to come back with uh, such design, uh, mm -hmm. And also thanks to this new movement we are introducing in that collection with these two, uh, two counters. 
So um, now again, we uh, come back to the format as we had it. As you all remember, when you watched our videos about the no Omega Nobelties, uh, we will hear my voice and Greg's voice, but you will only see the watch. This is Greg now who's going to run us through. Uh, the new chronoscope and the version you see now on your screen is the one in the new bronze alloy, a gold bronze alloy. Bronze gold alloy. Bronze gold alloy. Yes, because yeah. we introduced some precious element on that alloy. We launched the first piece uh, this year with the CMS 200 with this new brand new bronze uh, gold alloy which contains uh, copper. Uh, we need minimum 50% of copper to name an alloy a bronze alloy. The idea behind this development was to develop a bronze alloy that could be worn with direct contact on the skin without this uh, very degree uh, oxidation, which can be toxic for the skin. So this alloy contains copper, 50% of copper. This is the minimum amount uh, to name this uh, alloy bronze. And then you have gold, 37.5% of gold, in order to reach the 9K hallmark. And then the rest being silver for the U, but also for the patina and the gallium to facilitate the manufacturing process. And finally, we put some palladium in order to increase the corrosion resistance, but also to give to this alloy a very, very nice color and hue. Uh, the bronze gold alloy sits exactly between our exclusive Sedna gold alloy and the moonshine gold alloy in terms of uh, color. The diameter of the case is 43 millimeters. Mm -hmm. Um, we have a case thickness. Uh, the case thickness is only only 12.8 millimeters, uh, thinner than the moon watch uh, with the Ezalite glass, which has a thickness of 13.6. So it's almost one millimeter thinner than the moon watch uh, with the Ezalite glass. We have just been measuring a lug to lug distance of. Uh, 48, so the lug to lug distance is 48 millimeters, you see here. And already in your picture, the star. The star is definitely this brand new movement, the 9908 movement, which is based on the 9900 uh, movement, but here without the self-winding mechanism. And um, with this beautiful, uh, let's say, chronoscope bridge, it's a three-quarter uh, bridge, uh, you have only the balance bridge, but the rest uh, being the, the chronoscope bridge. And as you can see, for once, the Geneva waves in arabesque don't start from the center of the movement, that they start, the starting point is the heart of the movement, so the, the balance wheel. The, you can see here the, the two barrels which are mounted in series, and they deliver a power reserve of 60 hours. And the goal of these two barrels is to deliver the maximum of energy to stabilize the chronometric performance uh, to the regulating organ. You can also see uh, just above the balance wheel, the column wheel. The column wheel is the mechanism which uh, distributes the chronoscope function, the start, stop, and the reset function. It's here. Very nice. So I will turn the watch around and you clearly now see on your screen, uh, those various uh, scales, starting with uh, the outside. The tachymeter scale is engraved on the ceramic, brown ceramic uh, bezel. And um, with the first, uh, we develop a vintage uh, enamel uh, material. So the scale is made with this uh, vintage enamel. You already know maybe the white enamel we already use on the Seamaster Diver 300 meters. But for this uh, particular piece, uh, we decided to develop this uh, vintage enamel uh, material. And, then and it's a ceramic inlay. This, yeah, it's ceramic It's a ceramic inlay. inlay to make that clear. It's not aluminum, it's a ceramic inlay. It's ceramic for that piece, yes. Yes, yes for, that. for the uh, bronze gold alloy. We can yeah. first talk about the Arabic numbers. Uh, yes, it course. was very important for us to to give also a new face into the Speedmaster range. So mm -hmm. we develop uh, and we designed first very nice Arabic numbers, uh, developing a, a specific tooling for, for that. And um, just underneath the, the Arabic numbers, you can see this spiral track. 
which is inspired by the spar we found on the two subdials. So there's definitely a, a design link between uh, the spiral underneath the Arabic number and the spirals uh, which are used to engrave the two counters, the two subdials at 3 and 9 o'clock. The Arabic numbers are made out of? Uh, they are made in, in brass and then we have a PVD coating, a bronze okay. PVD coating for the hands but also for the Arabic numbers. Uh, uh, the dial itself, the base of the dial itself is made of standard bronze and uh, as you can see um, uh, it has this dark brown color. So because it's a standard bronze which is made of copper and tin, 8% of tin, uh, we oxidize uh, the, the bronze plate and then we introduce a, a kind of patina to get this dark brown color, meaning that each dial is unique. And then after protecting the dial, we can uh, machine the two sub-dials to, to get this uh, silver treatment in order to have this uh, reverse pendle uh, style. So now, <clears throat> if we move uh, from the Arabic numbers more inside, we get mm. to the first of the scales. Yeah, this is the telemeter scale in order it's to here, measure distance. Uh, so let's use the telemeter uh, scale. So, the telemeter is distance equal speed multiplied by time. And here we talk about the speed of sound. So let's take this example. You, Alexander. Okay. Oh, it's nice. This, this is me? Yeah, this is you. <laughs> okay, I love it. Okay. Yeah, let me smile. That's good. Let me smile. Okay. <laughs> there is a thunder coming. Thunderstorm. Thunderstorm, a lightning storm. And you want to calculate how far I am from this storm, okay? So this is the second point, and you want to know the distance between you and the storm, okay? So when you see the lightning storm, you start your chronograph, and when you hear the thunderbolt, you stop it, okay? And if it is 30 seconds, you get exactly 10 kilometers, okay? So the distance equal the speed of sound, 340 meters per second, multiply by 30 seconds, and the result is 10, 200 meters, and 10, 200 meters is roughly 10 kilometers. And that's the result. And then the third scale is uh, the pulsometer, uh, which is based on 30 pulsation. So how it works, you start the chronograph, you count up to 30 pulsation. When you reach 30, you stop it and you can read how many pulse uh, you have per minute. How it works, uh, it's a doctor's watch. It is, yeah. it is. Yeah. It's a doctor's watch. Uh, you count 30 uh, pulsations. Uh, for instance, on uh, on your arm or wherever, yeah. wherever you, you get, um, you feel the pulse. And uh, well, once these 30 pulsations are over, you stop the chronograph and then you can effectively read the pulse. And then there is one more. Two more. Two more, yeah, Actually, two more, of course. Yeah, yeah. tachymeter. Uh, you can measure up to 20 units per hour, so speed of 20 km per hour or 20 miles per hour. Mm -hmm. Nice. No date in this case to, no to save space. Correct. Uh, to have a more um, a clear dial, you have a 12 hour counter. 12 plus 60 minute recorder at three o'clock mm -hmm. uh, because the two ends are on the same, uh, same axis. And then you have the small seconds I at nine o'clock. Stop and reset. Start. So the running second does not stop, of course, but stop and reset. And already now, when I am manipulating the first time the chronograph, I get this wonderful haptic response from the movement that you only have with a column wheel 
Um, it's really smooth. There's one defined mm. point the always. Direct as well. Yeah. There's no delay. No delay. Yeah. You, you push and it starts. And this is only possible with a column wheel. And yep. Very nice. Yeah. Thanks to the vertical clutching system, yeah, there's no delays. You can also observe here the, the box shape for the sapphire glass. Yeah. Uh, with anti-reflective treatment on, on both, both sides on both sides Very good. and for the back underneath to admire the, the, the finishing of the movement so flat sapphire crystal on the back but with anti-reflective treatment underneath you see here flat and boxed you can see both pretty nice I can turn it around once again you see the boxed and you see the flat So this is now the a steel version with a nice blue dial. This has a, some f stories to tell, as Greg uh, introduced me, as before Greg introduced me the watch, there's also not only the watch to be discovered, but also the bracelet. There's something interesting that Greg would just talk about. So the, the bracelet in terms of design is uh, clearly inspired by uh, the Nixon bracelet, uh, the collectors love to name this type of bracelet the Nixon one because uh, Amiga launched uh, the first pin master in gold in, uh, back in 1969 to celebrate the success of the Apollo 11 mission and uh, we launched a spin master in gold having this type of bracelet. We decided to introduce this type of bracelet uh, into the, the new Moonwatch master chronometer uh, we launched a few months ago. Uh, as you can see, um, uh, it has the Polish decoration links. Uh, between the legs, 21 millimeters uh, for the clasp, it's uh, 16. 21 and si here? Yeah, and 16. It's tapering down to 16 yeah. to the clasp. So you can see 16. the Omega logo. And uh, yes. if you open the, the clasp, you will discover something which is very interesting for the end consumer. Um, I will try to point it out. There it is. Yeah, we decided to introduce our uh, comfort release uh, adjustment system uh, with an extension of 2.3 millimeters. So if your wrist is getting bigger uh, at the end of the day, you can extend uh, your metal bracelet by You clearly see there is a push piece where yeah. it's written push. Yeah, and, and then you slide. So you push and you slide and you extend okay, your bracelet. I will try this with the gloves. That's probably not easy, but there we go. You see that there are 2.3 millimeters more now, and I will close it again, and this uh, little uh, space that is now opened, it will be gone then. I have to push and bring it back. That's with gloves, it's always difficult. Yeah, I made it, look. And then you have it again. I have to take my fingers away. That's oh, tricky, always tricky to do these things with gloves. But you clearly see, you push and you slide. 2.3 millimeters. Now, finally, something you all wanted to have in, an, in a bracelet for the Speedmaster. There it is. And Craig, uh, how can we, uh, do we expect to see this uh, fine adjustment also coming to other um, um, bracelets? Yes, uh, it's, uh, <laughs> it is absolutely possible one day to introduce such system into the, the, the Speedmaster Moonwatch uh, Master Chronometer Collection. Okay. Uh, tell, tell, uh, time will tell, but uh, I will we'll show it in. once again. Uh, it's open now. You see, and these are the 2.3 millimeters of fine adjustment you now have, and this is finally the point where I all the critics I've heard why does the Speedmaster doesn't have a fine adjustment? Here it is. So the dial is the same. Um, no differences. It's blue. We do have also, is it a ceramic inlay in the basil? No, this is uh, aluminium. Aluminium, in or, okay. In order to match perfectly with, uh, with the dial, uh, which use a, a, a CVD, it's not a PVD, but a CVD uh, coating in order to get this uh, very nice dark blue uh, color. And you can also admire the very nice sunbrush finish starting from the center. And again, uh, we played also with different colors for the different scales, um, you have a light gray color for uh, the blue, uh, for the blue face. But then for uh, the two sub dials, you can observe uh, a light blue transferred uh, scales. 
uh, in order to um, to obtain a contrast mm -hmm. and to and to increase the readability of the scales. And clearly visible now, since this chronograph has been running for a longer time, is the fact that you do have a counter integrating the minutes and the hours and readability from this counter is just as uh, if you would read the time from a watch. Exactly. So uh, this one is running for four hours and 30 minutes. I can do this even the other way around through my little monitor. I don't even have to look on the dial. It's really the best possible readability you have with a chronograph, four hours, 30 minutes and 22, 23, 24, 25 seconds. This is an integrated uh, counter and of course the six, this is the running seconds. We couldn't show this before because the other chronograph wasn't running long enough, but nicely to see now. Very good. Same dimensions. Same dimension. Uh, the case. The same uh, water resistance, which is uh, 50 meters or five bars or 165 feet, if you mm -hmm. want to. The, the idea was really to uh, to construct the case uh, as thin as possible. That's why we decided to to go with, uh, let's say, only five bars. But the idea was really to reduce as much as possible the thickness of the case. 12.8. 12.8 millimeters. Yeah. Gregory, thank you very, very much for introducing us uh, the Chronoscope, also for your little introduction here on the on the on the board, uh, Mr. Professor. <laughs> I will call you Professor Greg now. <laughs> uh, yeah, thanks for watching that video, Greg. Anything uh, last word yeah. you want to say? I trust you that you are showing all the references. Uh, as of course, I of course, I will. I uh, will in detail film all the things we didn't film that yet. So Greg is a little bit worried, but of course you will see all details of all variations. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And Thank you uh, for coming. And I think you've done a, a, a really good job and interesting watch. Different uh, design, something you probably didn't expect coming on a Speedmaster. Thin case Yeah. and felt good on the wrist, I have to Perfect. say. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Alexander. Thank you very pleasure. much. My Professor. pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> well, as Greg just said, this is uh, the version with the new bracelet. But of course, if you're not so keen into bracelets, steel bracelets, Omega also offers you a version with a leather strap. And there we go. This is the same watch, but now in an execution with a nice brown leather strap. As you see, a vintage look inspired here with some of the stitching and a pin buckle, not a folding clasp, it's a pin buckle. I'm very, I'm a big fan of pin buckles. I know you probably now would, you say, oh, I would want to, I would have liked to have a folding clasp. Yeah, but there isn't one. I'm opening it up for you so you can see with the Omega logo, classical pin buckle, very nice. It's all you need and of course, this gives me the possibility to show again the nice movement, the nice decoration of that movement. Uh, yeah, this is beautiful, very good. If you're more into silver dials, uh, just the one uh, as I wear on my Snoopy, um, this will be probably my favorite version, especially when I show you it with the, uh, br uh, with the strap. This is, uh, again, the new, bracelet with the extension as we just showed you 2.3 or 2.6 millimeters uh, more or less but this is a silver dial this is probably my favorite but yeah tastes are different so i don't want to and still again same same as we had it before you have the different scales you have the centralized sub-counter um, offering you perfect readability of the elapsed or stopped time, the, the time that has been measured. And you read it, I want to repeat that quickly, like a watch. So I even upside down can read it four hours and uh, 42, 43 minutes. And it's easy readable and the running second always at nine o'clock. So this is um, the uh, same watch now. I will start the chronograph so you will see it. This is the same watch with the silver dial and a very, very nice 
alligator strap vintage style inspired alligator but this would be probably my favorite version with that silver dial readability is excellent but okay tastes are different I'm, I'm, what, I'm, what am i saying <laughs> you choose not me this is from the back always the perfect view on that movement as greg said it before flat the sapphire crystal is flat on the back you see it when I'm holding it here, you can see. And you have the boxed glass once again with an anti-reflective treatment on both sides. Yes, both versions here. And there is still one to come. Your choice. Be spoiled of choice. So there's one thing I have to show you, and this is something you probably like very much when you're traveling with the watch. Um, of course, the new caliber i just pulling out the crown features the home time or not home time the function that you can readjust the hour when you are traveling without that the watch stops you see clearly that the central second hand still is swiping over the dial you see at position nine o'clock that the um that the running second is still running or is still the watch is still ticking and if you need to do some adjustments when you're traveling you just pull out the crown in the first position and in one hour steps you can easily adjust the watch to the new uh, time zone you're in to the new zone time in the time zone you're in and this is really a very useful and also good feature the watch has and it was of course necessary to mention it you can clearly see i'm pulling it back to the position where it smiles at you, you close the crown and that's it. This probably is the sportiest execution or version of the new Chronoscope Speedmaster. You already see on the dial you have more than one or two, or two colors. You have red, you have silver and you have black. And uh, if you watch correctly also the uh, central second hand is uh, uh, two is made out of two colors. Uh, silver and uh, red so you have the hands of the sub counter for the chronograph they are in red you have the uh, second hand of the running second in silver and this is really a version um, celebrating some color and I would say that's the sportiest version and now if I show you the strap you will quickly yeah you see this is what I've been talking about that's a uh, vintage car uh, type of uh, the gloves you wear in vintage cars, inspired strap, um, very nice. So this is probably the sportiest of the versions. And uh, I can imagine that this could or will be the one that will probably sell best. It's my, what I expect. Pin buckle, but you see red and black and if I you see um, the red finishing on the side, keeping the watch upside down. So you can once again see that flat sapphire crystal on the back. And if I continue to turn, you see here, very nice, the red stitching. Um, just very nice. Also here, I just want to show you, you have some uh, red stitching also here. And yeah, looks perfect. Let me just run you from above. This is, uh, you see, look, look, at, look at these details. So nicely executed there, the stitching. Then you go, you see? I could imagine, but let's, let's talk about it or let's discuss it in the comment section. What do you think? Is this going to be the most popular one? I think so. I'm very much into blue. Everybody who knows me knows that. Uh, would, would this would be my would not be my uh, version but uh, yeah I couldn't imagine that this is the one and of course if you are keen to wear it with the new bracelet including that quick uh, length extension correction you can of course it's the same watch looks different already uh, now uh, when you hold it into the camera uh, already to, due to the fact that it is a bracelet and not a strap this is this Nixon type inspired Speedmaster strap. And just to show it again, you see here, that's the, the little pusher you use. You see it 
you see read it now, push, and this is where you push to give that bracelet these extra two point and something millimeters if you need to do an adjustment. Integrated and as Greg mentioned it, it is going to be part of other bracelets too. So if you haven't noticed it before, I will just repeat that once again. This is going to be integrated also in other Speedmaster bracelets. So there it is, you wanted it and Omega listened to your critics and here it is. So um, just quickly, let me bring both of them into, your, um, into the camera. So now you see um, the sportiest of the two versions. I am trying to move those dials in front of the camera a little bit so you see the different aspects of the dial. Red, silver and black. We have three colors on the dials. And yep. Which one is your favorite? That's now the question. The sporty one or the one with the blue dial and the silver sub-counters. Um, we have less, uh, it's a less colorful dial, uh, blue, silver, that are the two colors appearing on this dial. Both the execution with the bracelet and that nice uh, brown, chocolate brown, or light, no, it's not chocolate, it's a light brown um, uh, strap. And the third one that would be my favorite, this is my favorite, I have to say. Yeah, it's, I've got, I got used to the look of my Snoopy so much that I really enjoy or like this kind of dial, silver dial with the blue hands. And also I have to admit the readability of time from this dial is excellent. Uh, what we do not see on uh, one of the dials is a Super Luminova or any uh, material that uh, is used to make the watch, um, yeah. Uh, be readable or time be readable in darkness. There is none. You can don't you don't see you see that these hands have no super luminova. It's a puristic version. And once again, the dial with the telemeter, pulsometer scales, um, and of course, in the in the inlay and the basal is a tachymeter scale and the difference to show that once again to the um, bronze gold. This is the bronze gold version. The bronze gold version features a ceramic inlay and all the other versions I've just been showing to you do feature an aluminum alloy that is uh, not scratchable or almost not scratchable. It's a special, special aluminum alloy and um, this is very in line with the history of the Speedmaster. And you all know that the original Speedmaster features an aluminum inlay in the base. And this, what you see now is ceramic to make the contrast. Yep. Well, um, you have the choice now. Um, you have the choice, this one, or this one. What do you say? Or this one. I'm very keen to get your feedback, which is your favorite watch. Uh, use the comment section, and I'm I was happy uh, yes to present you the Omega Chronoscope, the new Speedmaster here from Milan. Goodbye. <laughs>